Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Doing it a little different today. It's nighttime. I normally record in the morning, but I got an early morning flight tomorrow. I'm at my aunt's house. And so it's night. We got these like kind of yellow lights, but we're going to do it anyway. We are going to talk about what's going on in the NFT market because there was a lot that happened today and I want to get the show in. So uh, we're going to talk about Mythics uh, that launched today. I'm uh, going to talk about this OpenSea swap feature and a really interesting art sale at the end. One of the cooler one of ones I've seen uh, in a while. Pumped to talk about that. But starting off with a quick market overview, volumes were up a small bit versus the day before. Uh, Blur had about 67% market share. Uh, in terms of buyers, they did seem to dip a little bit. So buyers going down a little bit relative to where we've been over the past week or two. Large cap index uh, basically flat, uh, up a little bit, had some strength in Azuki, some strength in Clonex. Uh, and weakness in D-Gods, we did see someone come in and dump a handful of D-Gods, uh, and that floor went from about 8.5 to 8.2 or so. The mid-cap index was down a small bit, and the reason for that was you had some weakness in OPEPIN, some weakness in VV checks. Uh, here we look at the OPEPIN chart, uh, and just giving back a bit of the gains that we had earlier in the week. Not too surprising, I think right now when anything pumps, a lot of people do come in and want to take those profits. Uh, one other project I wanted to mention was Cyber Kongs. You know, Cyber Kongs used to be one of the ultimate, ultimate grails, you know, still holding a pretty decent, like seven or eight ETH floor price, but it got, it got up to about a hundred, uh, and was really kind of one of the yield generating NFTs in the ecosystem every day. Cyber Kongs would churn out bananas and there are a few other, uh, and bananas were sellable. And then there are a few other NFTs within the ecosystem. Uh, they have been talking about doing another airdrop and they released some of the details today. Uh, here's a little bit. There's going to be a mint of 9,000 NFTs, 0.25 ETH per mint, and it's going to be in a week on July 27th. Now, there are also going to be 7,000, which are going to be dropped. And if you see here, you can see the details. Two go to the Genesis Kongs holders, one go to the Baby Kongs holders, and then they also say active uh, BX Kongs. And I'm not exactly sure what they mean by active, but one of the interesting things they are doing here is that these are going to be free but you have a 180 day vesting period where you cannot sell these 7,000. So in exchange for getting it for free, you basically can't sell. If you sell it too soon, you're gonna get charged up to 0.25 ETH and over time, uh, that fee will go lower and lower. Uh, a little bit more about this, just going over the details and a lot of this I've already said. I think this 0.25 ETH, it is a tough market to be raising You know what, what is really over $4 million. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I think after what we saw with Ether, you know, where they couldn't raise a million dollars after uh, the negativity around the elementals drop, I do think it is a tough environment for raising money, but uh, we will see what happens here, especially here because you know, these entities will have a higher higher price than the floor price for Kong's VX, which currently have a 0.21 ETH floor versus the 0.25 ETH mint asking price. In terms of our projects, Let's talk about a couple of art sales that happened. Gumbo uh, by Matthias Isaacson. I talked about this yesterday. This was the top, or this was the most recent art blocks curated project, did the most volume. Uh, Meridians had a couple of sales, Memories of Chilin. It's not on here, and this is my fault, but Fidenza's also had two sales, and I'll show you those too. Uh, but looking at some of the top sales, we had a, this Meridian. I really like this color palette. You know, 6.37 ETH, a nice Memories of Chilin sale here for 4.74 ETH, a Harvest uh, sold for about 2.52 ETH, so pretty low price for where Harvards have been recently. And then we have a strand of Solitude uh, by William Mapan, which sold for 2.4 ETH. Looking at these two Fidenza sales that happened as well, and these happened on X2Y2, which is why the screen didn't pick them up. Uh, but on X2Y2, we had two really nice Fidenza sell, one for 70 ETH, one for 86.69 ETH, the 86.69 uh, has a, a nice outline to it. And this, the buyer of this actually sold a trippy for ape as part of a pretty complex transaction, uh, in exchange for other NFTs, but sold a trippy for ape, uh, and bought this Fidenza. So interesting sale there. Someone leaving kind of a grail PFP, uh, in exchange for a Fidenza. Now the sale, the buyer on the left of that paint of that red background has these three NFTs. And it's clear that there is kind of that jumbo, uh, look and feel with that jumbo surrounded by other or smaller sizes. Uh, that this buyer kind of wants to build a collection of. So I think it's really cool when you see uh, a bunch of Fidenzas that all kind of blend together and have, have commonalities like these three do. Second thing to talk about, OpenSea unveils a swap feature. Here, they're calling it deals. Here's the tweet for them. Uh, offer your NFTs for other people securely on OpenSea. Uh, and I kind of went through the process. I wanted to see what's, what's it like. And it starts out with that screen in the left uh, where it says, make a deal. You put the 
wallet, you put the wallet address of someone you want to trade with. So let's say I want to trade with my friend Cyrus. I put his name in here and let's say I want to get his elemental bean. You on there, there is a plus sign and you can go uh, in their wallet and you push that plus uh, and then you kind of start to build a trade and you say next and you, you say what you want to trade in exchange for it. At the end of the day, you end up offering a trade where you can send the deal. Here I'm offering uh, Cyrus three elemental beans from him in exchange for NFT stats that eat. No way. No way am I doing that trade with Cyrus, but I am pretending I would do that say, trade with Cyrus right here. Uh, throw that offer down, you send it, do a gas transaction, and I imagine they get it on their side. Uh, just kind of going over a bit more of the details, you can only select NFTs uh, from the same chain, so you can't move to Polygon or Solana, uh, and you can only do it from badge collections, which is basically them saying, you know, this is an official collection, and they can get that wrong. There is still risk there, so I wouldn't say that it's kind of risk-free. But uh, but yeah, you're only going with badge collections because I would think otherwise you get a ton of fake board API clubs. And we saw that all the time on NFT Trader and other platforms. Uh, there have been a lot of scams through NFT Trader, through PseudoSwap. So I think kind of putting this onto OpenSea, a, a, a platform that everyone's kind of familiar with, uh, I think is, is pretty interesting. Now you have to include NFTs. One thing I was wondering is, are they going to make it? So you can just do WEATH because you can always add WEATH. You can always add WEATH to any deal but they're not letting you throw a swap on there that's weed for an NFT. And I think that they know that people would do that to get around royalties. We've seen it on Blur right now that people are using uh, the fact that you can send from the blend wallet to pay zero royalties. And that's really taking over so much trading. I think OpenSea did at least try to avoid that scenario where you went and offered a swap weed for NFT and got around royalties. Because my guess, and I'm pretty sure this is true, is that all these trades will end up being zero royalty. But I think that given the very low fee or environment, it doesn't really cannibalize their business that much. They're not making a ton off fee, a ton off of fees. And I think right now the race and the goal of these exchanges is to just create features that add value. Um, Blur is certainly doing that. And I think OpenSea wants to as well. Punks OTC did say, you know, give it a few weeks, perhaps like be careful here because we have seen different ways that people put different scams on just when anything new comes out. So we'll be interesting uh, to see what that looks like. Third thing to talk about, the Mythics launch. Finally, I say finally because you know we, we've been within the company, we've been talked about this for a long time and it's just awesome uh, to see it come out into the open. Here is the tweet from the Moonbergs account uh, and here's what some of the art looks like. I personally love the art. I just think it's, I think the traits are so fun. There's, you know, it's kind of a really nice compliment in my view to Moonbirds. So I really like it. I know Colin who, who's been working on this has worked, just devoted his life to this uh, for four months as well as his entire team. So uh, just really fun to see it kind of come to life. As far as what is the mechanism, there's very little supply, but supply gets added every single day. Uh, and there are two ways that supply gets added. One is that you can burn an oddity in exchange for a mythic. Uh, and the second is that, you know, there have been eggs kind of dropped to Moonbird holders and 50 of those are going to hatch every day. Uh, so any day you can have up to a hundred new mythics that get released. There are three different kinds of eggs. There's stone, runic, and legendary. The, the, the higher quality eggs, the runic and the legendary, we, when you mint uh, a mythic, you get two or three to choose from, and then you pick which one, and the other two uh, basically don't will, will never exist again. Now, if you look at it, we've only had 66 in the first day that have actually come to life. And I think the reason for that is that only 16 uh, people actually went through the process of doing the gas transaction to convert the egg into a mythic. So It'll be interesting to see how much do these numbers kind of keep up over time because the collection can be 20,000 big, but I, you know, clearly we're not going to get that big as people, you know, a lot of people are going to want to keep their oddities and you know, maybe people will be slow to uh, turn their eggs into mythics. There have only been three trades so far. You know, when you have a collection that has less than 70 NFTs, you're not going to get a ton of trades out the gate. Uh, one was for 0.4 weath, uh, one was for 0.45. I have that here and one for 0.6 ETH. Uh, which was the most expensive trade. So, you know, it's, it's just an interesting dynamic where you start with so little supply and grow over time. So we will see how this plays out. You know, one of the reasons I like it is because I have heard Colin go through the lore and what they're building with the lore uh, and just kind of the story here. They have something called the Dread, which is basically the enemy of the universe that uh, these mythics and moonbirds operate in. And overall, go to the Proof website, check it out because it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's just really good creative stuff. And I definitely uh, en enjoyed kind of following along. Notable sales. Let's talk about a few. We're going to make this pretty quick. There were two Board Ape Yacht Club sales, and both of these were kind of what I think would have once been seen as grails. You know, I mean, the, a Trippy Fur and then a King's Crown. Now, King's Crown is not at the level of Trippy Fur, not the level of Gold Fur, but it was really kind of a top quality trait for a long time. And this one's a, a reasonably clean one here. Um, and you had the Trippy Fur sell for 165 ETH, 
uh, and the King's Crown sell for 50 ETH. Now, what I think is clearly happening right now in this market is Pimp Capital was the buyer of the trippy fur. It's almost like we have different prices for Pimp Capital where he just picks which ones he wants and he goes and he buys it and he pays the price that he has to pay uh, versus everyone else. So a King's Crown at 50 ETH, kind of a little bit in the range of, of where that's been, but an interesting contrast between those two sales. And then one, one of one, I really wanted to discuss because this is such a cool NFT. Fuji by Matt Scoble sold for 3.069 ETH. Uh, and this, what, what it basically is, is it is a grid of 20 different pictures that look like this. They're not photographs, but it's 20 different from the exact same location at different times of day and with different weather patterns. And you can use the different arrows to pick which one you actually want to have. So if you see here on this, uh, here are four of them, there are 20 of them, but these four are just the exact same location, uh, you know, different times of day. And here you have the lightning in the lower left, different weather patterns. So it is really, really cool to scroll through this. Going over a little bit more about this, he says the entire scene was generated using real world scientific data captured from space, the air around while he was on location in Japan uh, in November 2022. There are 20 images, different times of day, different weather patterns. Buyers can, oh, this is kind of cool. A person who owns the NFT can mint and sell the NFTs for the individual images. Uh, and this is something they made with Transient Labs to build that technology. So really kind of interesting stuff where the buyer can allow lists and has all these different technologies available to actually mint those 20 individual images should they want to. Uh, the auction winner also got a limited edition backpack that had a bunch of goodies in it. And this was kind of cool and it's too bad it didn't happen. But if the auction went above 10 ETH, they agreed that they were going to buy a flight for the buyer to go to Japan. Uh, and they were also going to get them three days at the Airbnb where the images were taken. So that would have been cool, but we didn't really come close to that price for uh, for this artist. Uh, there haven't been a ton of sales from Matt Scoble, but this one on the left sold for 9.169 ETH. The one on the right is 4.69 ETH reserve. These are not photographs. These are really just taken using a ton of scientific data that's been captured. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it, it does seem very, very interesting. And, and the outputs are truly, truly beautiful. So that is awesome stuff. That is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the show, even though I'm talking a little quieter because my, my aunt is sleeping upstairs, even though the lighting is kind of yellow all that stuff. I did want to get you the show. I didn't want to do two days off uh, in, in this week. Uh, I'll be flying tomorrow, but uh, give us a like below. Tell us what you think in the comments, subscribe to the channel, uh, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great weekend.